All right, one of the things that uh, I got kind of clued to look into from another YouTuber was uh, trying to figure out what my solar day was like uh, throughout the year at my location. So you can just type in NOAA Solar Calculator, and it will uh, bring you up to a website on the NOAA page that uh, allows you to zoom in to your particular location it will uh, basically generate the lat long for your location and tell you uh, on the particular day, month, and year, and time what uh, your sunrise in the green line, where the sun will come up, at what uh, angle of azimuth from 0, which is north, 90, which is east, and so forth. So today, uh, which is October 18th at this uh, it shows that the sunrise was at 7:32, and that uh, at the current time the azimuth for the uh, Sun if I click the current button will show that the Sun is at 130 or 148 degrees azimuth which is halfway between roughly between 90 degrees and 180 degrees which is due south so we're basically south southeast is where the sun is coming at this very moment <clears throat> now you can go through here if you look I'll zoom all the way down and you can actually see my house here's my house and I actually designed my house so that it would sit south southwest so I would get most of the sun during the day and I have no trees in the front yard so I actually have a pretty good location for solar and I do have my solar panels in the front of the house currently and you can tell on day uh, this on today the sun came up and was just basically perpendicular with my house and at the current time the sun is hitting at this angle so I'm actually getting some pretty good power but obviously the most power will come when the, the Sun is actually at a exactly perpendicular to the front of my panels which are attached to the front of the house say equivalent to the roof line but what's kinda interesting is what happens if you change the uh, the date so let's say that we have uh, this is today now if I go and say okay what is it on uh, the vernal equinox which is the beginning of spring just like you'd expect the sun rises in the east directly 90 degrees and sets in the west directly 90 degrees which is the same for every location in the northern hemisphere if I change it to the start of summer which is June 21st the sun rises way more north of east spends the whole day shining on the house and uh, goes down pretty much north of west and uh, it turns out our our days are very long in my area in Minnesota in the June July time frame if I go back to um, the fall equinox which is September 21st or so we get back down to where the sun rises due east sunset is due west so basically 180 degrees or half of the day or 12 hours of daylight and I go to <coughs> the winter solstice which is December 21st you can see that our sun rises quite low or late and only stays up for a uh, maybe uh, a little, about nine hours and then goes down so the, the question was you know should I what I'm really trying to answer is should I put a tracker on my panels to take advantage of these conditions because if you look back in in the summertime I'm getting if I have my panels facing this way which is to the south southwest there's a whole bunch of time, hours and hours, that there is they are not being exposed to the sun in the morning. So I'm really forfeiting a lot of power that's available, and not only in the morning but in the evening, because I'm just not facing the sun. So that's been what I've been thinking about.
So if I put this into a spreadsheet and just kind of uh, sum it all up, as we mentioned uh, on the vernal equinox, which is beginning of spring in March, the sun rises uh, to the east, 90 degrees, sets in the west, 270. That's a total of 180 degrees. If you just divide that into uh, how many minutes there are into the day, half of the day is 720 minutes, which is 12 hours and zero minutes. Uh, summertime, at least on uh, June 21st when it starts, we actually have a solar day of 16 hours and 40 minutes. Subtract that from 24, you can see how short our night is. It's less than 8 hours. It's kind of nice to be up here in the summertime. you got long days, lots of time to go boating fiction. But we pay that penalty come winter. Our uh, winter day is less than 8 hours, so it's, it's actually the mirror image of what happens on the summer solstice. So considering that, I did I looked up, there's a thing called the number of sun hours per day value. It's basically some average number when you take all of the hours of the whole year for each location in the world, you can get a number for how many sol sun hours there are per day. And so I took uh, what it is near us, they, have, they had a day, uh, collected data from uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, which is only about an hour drive from me. And uh, just to see how it ranked compared to some of these others in the country. And obviously there's a lot of data, but kind of the holy grail in the United States for solar uh, power is in Phoenix, uh, the southwest of the, in the United States. They get about six and a half hours per day of sun. On the other extreme, there's a, a place like Chicago, which is actually only about a five-hour drive from here to the southeast of Minnesota. They only get a little over three hours per day of sun. I'm not sure exactly why, but there's there is some you know they're not they're not they don't have as long of a day in the summertime for one. Um, so anyway, there are there are some areas of the country that are kind of low for solar uh, production capability because there's short sun hours per day values and then there's some that are even better but <clears throat> even though we're in a quite northerly uh, latitude here in Minnesota we fall in a pretty good position even as good as uh, Alabama and uh, you know within shooting distance of some of these places in California and even in Florida so it's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, we can do some good, good uh, energy production here in Minnesota. Now there's a site on the internet. If you just type in PV watts, you'll get to a government site in the U.S. for a uh, calculator that will try to. Uh, it does give you an option to determine how much of an impact going from a fixed system to a single axis system to a dual axis tracking system. So if you go there, they'll basically there's a way that you can enter your latitude and longitude either with your zip code or directly. It'll then get you through this page here. You can type in an array size and you can type in a DC to AC derating factor, which would be such as if you're grid tying, how much you're going to lose through your grid tie inverter. So I just put in a number just to have a, a round number, let's say a kilowatt set of panels. And <clears throat> most of our low cost Chinese grid tie inverters, I just assume maybe a 77% derating, meaning we're going to lose some power through those inverters. And then uh, just select initially the fixed tilt type array. Those are where you, which most of us have. And here is based on my, my latitude. It says that my default should be my latitude of almost 45 uh, degrees north latitude and uh, 180 degrees due south is kind of the default. 
Uh, obviously, you can play that, play with that if you, you know, want to have your particular Holmes number. But I just wanted to use this as a just to find out whether adding tracking of any type, how much of an effect it was going to have before I go spend the time and money trying to make it happen. So let's. Uh, and then there is uh, you can put in your your cents per kilowatt hour that you're charged. I just put ten cents, which is pretty close to what I end up paying. All right, so let's hit calculate, and it generates a result. <coughs> here's my here's my uh, station information. Here's some of the same data I entered earlier, and then the results are based on different months. It calculates how many kilowatt hours per square meter per day per month, how much AC energy in kilowatt hours it'll produce. So, in Minnesota, you can see in the in the, the worst month, which is December, it would only this one kilowatt system in a fixed panel approach, properly oriented, would only generate 71 kilowatt hours. But in the best month, in the bulk of the Summer would be up in the 120 range, but on average for the whole year, it would come out 1224. So let's go back and see what happens if I add one axis of tracking. Calculate it. All right, we have no change, no information changed over here. It's just going to give me some better results for my for my results for the year and you can see on on the total year we're up to 1554 from 1224 which is a 27 percent increase so I would get a 27 percent annual increase just by adding tracking to my system so let's go back and see what it's like if I do dual tracking calculate it Okay, this now gives me 1649, where the single tracker was 1554. So now, if I added both types of tracking, I've increased my uh, by about 34 and about 35 percent from just a fixed axis system. So that's good, inf interesting information and. Uh, it will help me and others determine whether it's really worth going uh, either fixed or go up to a single uh, uh, single axis tracking or dual axis tracking. So go ahead to the site and plug in your numbers and see what you do. Now the if I just would have changed the number of kilowatt hours, it would not have made any difference. The percent of improvement would come out percent wise the same. You'd get about 27 percent in my case meaning this area you'd get 27 percent increase by going single tracking you'd get 35 percent increase by going dual tracking hope that helped